The day after the big Northern California earthquake, the San Francisco Bay Area, the digging out continues, and so does the counting of the dead. NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Good evening from San Francisco. This is the Marina District neighborhood. It was the hardest hit residential area in San Francisco. It is believed that between three and five people died in that apartment house right back there. Although I must tell you, most of the damage in San Francisco has been confined to this area, which is about four square miles altogether. I made a helicopter tour today of the entire Bay Area, and the greatest damage was right here on the Oakland Bay Bridge and, of course, on Interstate 880. Yet, more than 272 people are believed to have died. The death toll could go over 300 before we're all through. What are they saying now about the estimated death toll? Right now, Tom, they have 10 confirmed dead. This was not supposed to happen. California's bridges and, earth and uh, freeway abutments are reinforced to make them earthquake resistant, but this time it failed. Perhaps as many as 150 to 250 cars and their occupants were crushed when the top deck of the freeway collapsed onto a lower deck. It happened at the worst possible time, evening rush hour. This morning, firemen hoisted their ladders up to the structure looking for victims. Paramedics with specially trained dogs searched for signs of life and found none. Jackhammers were called in to begin the task of breaking up the rubble. It will be some time before the exact death toll is known. To anyone right now. The collapsed freeway section is east of the San Francisco Bay Bridge, connecting the bridge to downtown Oakland. A section of the bridge itself caved in during the quake, tossing cars and people into the bay, crushing others. This home video shows what it was like atop the bridge as the quake hit, a moment of sheer terror. Authorities say it will be at least three weeks before the bridge reopens, completely disrupting life for thousands of Bay Area commuters. And late this afternoon, Transportation Secretary Samuel Skinner said it would probably be a year and a half before this section of freeway is reopened. Meanwhile, state officials have promised a thorough investigation of why it collapsed. Tom? We get a report tonight on what's been going on in San Francisco from NBC's Don Oliver. Most of San Francisco remained undamaged after the quake, but power was still out in the downtown area today. Without signals, traffic was snarled. One area of the city was hit hard, the marina, not far from the Golden Gate Bridge. Thousands of curious poured into the neighborhood to stare at the warped and twisted buildings. Yeah, but I got an to left. And watch firemen continue to pour water on the remains of an apartment building and two homes. Most of San Francisco, the hilly part, is built on solid rock. But this was once part of San Francisco Bay. It's all reclaimed land. The quake turned it into a bowl of jello, and four-story buildings were shook to the ground. The fires were believed to have resulted from broken natural gas lines. During the night, rescue workers looked for survivors in the damaged buildings and guarded against looters. Today, Mayor Art Agnos said the citizens of San Francisco were well-behaved. Crime was way below average. Uh, the bookings were down, the arrests were down. Today, the grim search for bodies began. They used chainsaws to attempt to clear away the debris, but finally gave up, saying the job was too dangerous. They know that the bodies of two people are in this building, but firemen are reluctant to go after them. This was a four-story building. There's only two stories above the ground now. How are you going to get at them? And uh, we can't risk sending a crew in if this is going to topple over. Vice President Quayle toured the area by helicopter and then surveyed the marina damage from the ground. He promised quick federal assistance. Residents were warned not to enter buildings in the marina until they are judged to be safe. Some took great chances anyway in order to salvage their belongings. Oceanfront community may not get its electricity back for three days. The water supply is contaminated and the sewers aren't working. Only a handful of stores were open today. Residents spent hours waiting in line to buy bottled water and bread. Only one customer at a time was served. Fluid, hot dogs, Pepsi, six-pack root beer, bread, chips. Earthen Dam Reservoirs, though, in the mountains above the town, held. It was the only good news Santa Cruz had. Uh, I don't know if this isn't the big one. Uh, I don't know what would be left of this town if we got anything bigger than what we had. The National Guard was activated to help police patrol the streets. County officials said damages here, where the earthquake started, would exceed $500 million. Roger O'Neill, NBC News, Santa Cruz.
California has six nuclear power plants altogether, none of them damaged by the earthquake. Rancho Seco, which is near Sacramento, just north of here, and Diablo, just south of here, are open and doing business. The federal government is deeply involved in the emergency rescue operation going on here. President Bush has declared seven counties in Northern California federal disaster areas. NBC's Robert Hager in Washington has been following that part of the story. In Washington, an army of federal and private workers began organizing a huge relief effort. President Bush, who will visit the scene late this week, grabbed a phone himself at one point. Jeff, this is the president. How is it doing out there? What are you, are you getting a lot of requests for emergency medical?